Hi everyone, welcome to Tim's Final Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, thanks for tuning in for another episode on this one. I'm a, it's a reboot episode, I'm redoing my Y&T cassettes, one of my favorite bands. You've heard me do many episodes, talk about how I think they were overlooked. Uh, one of the criminally overlooked rock bands, but uh, I'm redoing this for, I think, two reasons. One, I've gotten a lot better at filming these, and that was an early episode. I think I did that in early 2015. And the other thing is it's more complete. It's way, way more complete. So, it's worth giving another look at my Y&T collection. So I'm going to throw in a few things that aren't strictly cassettes, but they kind of belong here more than anywhere else. The first thing I want to talk about is something that I never thought that I would ever have in my possession. Um, Y&T's first two albums were done under the name Yesterday and Today. They were done on London Records. London Records went out of popular music rock and pop music in 1978 and um, all of the bands that were on the label jumped ship somewhere. Uh, ZZ Top went to Warner Brothers, April Wine in the States went to Capitol and uh, Y&T eventually found themselves on A&M. And those London albums for Y&T, because they weren't big sellers, they were never repressed and they were very very rare for many years and uh, they didn't come out on CD until 1992 and I talk about that in my CD episode that I did for Y&T, and I probably talked about it in one of the vinyl episodes I did. But of course, it's the 70s, so there's another format I want to talk about, and that's 8-track. I mean, anybody that knows these episodes knows I love collecting 8-tracks of uh, bands and albums that I like. You talk about a low pressing. How many copies of the, those first two Yesterday and Today albums do you think came out in 8-track? Uh, in, in the years of looking, uh, on the old Y&T forum, on the Medicchetti.com forum, someone had an autographed copy of the first one, and um, I actually used that picture to create a Discogs entry, and I'm glad that I did, because it was in my want list, and unexpectedly, one night I'm laying in bed, I get a notification that this is up for grabs. Now, this is pretty beaten up. This is the first Y&T album, Yesterday and Today, on 8-track. Unbelievable. I, I, I was practically giddy when I got this. I just couldn't believe that I had. I now owned a Y&T 8-track. I don't know how many of their albums made it to 8-track. I know the first two did. This one in Struck Down, and I know... Uh, I would imagine that Earthshaker did, because it was 1981. Maybe Black Tiger? But I've never, ever seen them. They're, if, they're, if they're out there... They're scarce, and people that may have them aren't, not only are they holding on to them, but they're not sharing pictures of them. So, a Google image search for YT8 tracks will net you no end of frustration. And if you put yesterday and today at tracks, you're going to find the Beatles. So, this. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, there's no cover on it. Well, that's because this is one that came with a slip case, and I've never actually owned one of these before. I used to wonder why they were like this, but a slipcase would have had the front and back, it would have had the artwork on it, those tended to get thrown out. So what you have here is what would normally be on the back of a cart, there's the song titles, Beautiful Dreamer, 25 Hours a Day, Broken Up, and the side of this, is, like I said, it's pretty warm, but you can tell what it says. So I can say, I'm proud to add a Y&T 8-track to my Y&T collection. I'm going to hold on to this with, you know, Take good, good care of it. And another thing that I've been looking for in my want list, believe it or not, is just simply this. The first Y&T album on cassette. Scarce. Very, very scarce. This also showed up in my Discogs want list. So, patience pays off, I guess. Um, so, again, very low pressings on this. I, I figured eventually I'd come across a copy of this. I didn't think I'd ever find the A-track, but there, there you go. So that's actually the cover. You'll notice that they're using the same blue blue color for the... That was the that's what they used. So, uh, yeah, I was very excited to get this too. 1976, the debut YT album. There's nothing inside of it for credits, and the cassette is also blue. So for a long time, this was a hole in my YT tape collection. That's the first one. Oddly enough, the second one you see... I bet you could go on eBay right now. Somebody's selling one. One. Not a lot, but this is Struck Down, the second album on London Records. Again, they're using the blue casing. It's white on the side this time. 
and a similar look to the back here. Nothing inside the J card, and once again, a blue cassette. Uh, these two here are probably two of the rarest cassettes in my collection. Um, back when I got into YT in 1990, if you'd have handed me these, I would have said, you were the greatest person on the face of this earth, because I didn't think I'd ever find these. And only knew a few like live versions of uh, some of the songs and uh, the uh, Beautiful Dreamer that's on the best of 81 to 85. So now we're going to get into the A&M tapes, because they signed with A&M Records from 81 to 85. They had a very distinctive look in the U.S. This is Earthshaker, the first album under the Y&T name. Great, 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 great album. So like I said, very distinctive look to the A&M tapes. This isn't. This is one that evaded me for many, many years. I couldn't find this on cassette. That's what the tape itself looked like, and a little bit of information here. For a while, the the oldest Y&T cassette that I owned was this one, Black Tiger. This is from 1982. Looks the same, pretty much the same here on the side. They made the name of the band title looks a little bit different. Really stands out. If you were looking for tapes back then, you could spot the Y&T ones because they just kind of jumped out at you. About the same on the back. The A&M logo molded into the case itself. There's the cassette and a little teeny tiny bit of credits there. Not much. The Earthshaker cassette, uh, to this day, and I know there's one out there somewhere. I may get it if I see it. Well, I will get it if I see it. Who am I kidding? But I've never seen a Canadian copy of Earthshaker on cassette. But I, So the oldest Canadian one I have is Black Tiger from 1982. And you'll notice here, it doesn't list the album title. That's something A&M were doing. I find it really annoying. Uh, my copy of Brian Adams' Cuts Like a Knife is like that. It doesn't say the album title. It just says the artist's name. And when I bought it, honestly, I thought I was buying his first album. So, uh, so there you go. Don't see many copies of this. Someone put a piece of tape over this, I guess. I used to do that too. Someone said it, you know, it kept it from fading, but then you try to take the tape off, see what happens. Actually, in this Canadian copy, there's way more credits than there was in the U.S. copy. As a matter of fact, I think it may have everything in this that it had inside the record because there were no lyrics printed. Uh, the first Y&T album I bought, I got into them in 1990. I saw the video for Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, said, that's incredible. So I got into the band, I knew their albums were rare, that I knew that much about them. And um, the first one I actually got was this, and it was this cassette right here, Mean Streak from 1983. I uh, love this album, love this album art. Uh, since, uh, you know, this was the only one I had, I listened to this album a, a lot for periods of days, just you know, getting into this band. Nothing inside the J, on the opposite side of the J card. Um, just credits here, pretty full credits. Mean Streak was the first Y&T album to chart at all in the U.S. I also have a Canadian version of it. A&M cassettes uh, in Canada, you can tell, look way, way different from their U.S. counterparts. I actually kind of prefer the way that the Canadian ones look. Maybe that's just... I don't know whether I'm Canadian or I'm just used to seeing more of them. A white cassette. They would also make black ones. I think this must be an original. And the same credits that are inside the U.S. cassette. And the most successful Y&T album, of course, 1984. Almost hit the top 40. Almost went gold in Rock We Trust. So, 1984. By this time, it's Music That Shines, A&M on BASF Tapes. They actually credited the company that manufactured the tapes he, these were on. This is a Y&T album that you see more often than anything else. It looks a little bit different on the back here. The song titles are written a little bit different. The barcode on it. That's the cassette itself. And there's your credits. Now this also came out on CD back then. I'd love to have an original U.S. CD of In Rock the Trust, but I don't. Uh, it was the most successful album in Canada, too. It was their only album to chart. It hit number 78 on the RPM charts in 1984. 
It's the only Y&T album or single I've ever seen on those charts. I've, I've never even seen I figured Summertime Girls would have charted, but if it did, I've never seen it. I've, I've combed through the singles charts. So anyway, that's why you see In Rock We Trust in Canada more than any other album, too. This is a Canadian version on cassette. Chromium dioxide, of course. That's what they were all the label. Most of the labels are doing at this point. And I'm going to point out that the serial number on this, CS5007, now that's the same as the U.S. label. The Canadian labels usually mirrored the U.S. releases, but that becomes significant for the next one I'm going to show you. So there's a little bit of credits on the back. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> a little bit of credits on the back. See, there's the BASF the crediting, the, crediting them. Nothing inside the card. There's the cassette itself. And I also have a reissue of this album. So it looks the same, looks very much the same. A little bit um, high performance tape written there on the top, and also the serial number has a seven before it. So it's the same serial number, it's just got the prefix seven, which means it was probably a different price code. Tape looks exactly the same, except for the um, that little added seven. I notice little things like that way too much. So 1985. Uh, Y&T released a, a very short live album, Open Fire. I think this was mostly a way that a and could, could kick out uh, Summertime Girls and give people something to buy when they heard them do that song. There's a story behind that. Uh, one of the execs they were working with, or a and men, didn't like the song, kicked it across the park lot, and then someone else heard it and said, well, what is that? That sounds like a hit. Anyway, it's the studio version that appears on here and also appears on their next studio album, which is odd. Uh, this album, oddly enough, even though it was recorded on the In Rock We Trust tour, it contains no material from In Rock We Trust, no material from Mean Streak. It's all stuff from Earthshaker, Black Tiger. This was the first time I think a lot of people heard 25 hours a day from the first album, because they play it on here, and uh, also a live version of the new song called Go For The Throat, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail not too long from here. So, there's a page of credits, and if you look, you'll see what appears to be scissors here. That's scissors. So you can cut out this order form to order their home video live at the San Francisco Civic, which is one of two uh, VHS tapes that I actually kept. So I'm going to segue into that really quick. You can send away for this. Now, I didn't do that. I wasn't into them back then. I found this in the store, actually, in 1990. Uh, this is an edited version. It's about an hour-long concert from uh, one that they did for MTV. They were in between a bill, Lita Ford opened, then Y&T, and then Twisted Sister in their hometown, Y&T's hometown, of San Francisco. So it's a short set list. It's not the complete set list they did. But uh, I watched this a lot. And since it's never been reissued on DVD, I think you can see parts of it on YouTube, maybe all of it. But when I got rid of all my VHS tapes, to actually I sold to Marty at Livewire, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't give this up. I just couldn't. So there it sits. So that's that's live at the San Francisco Civic. So back to Open Fire. This is a Canadian version of Open Fire. It's actually a Canadian Columbia House version. The one way you can tell that on the side is that there's after the serial number there's a there's a six digit number in brackets there, and anyone that ordered from Columbia House knows what that was all about. Also, the cassettes look different. They were made to look like they were on CBS records because that was. Um, CBS ultimately owned Columbia House. It was a division. And it also mentions Live at the San Francisco Civic inside the Canadian version of this, but it doesn't give an order form. So I've never seen a Canadian copy of it. I'm guessing if somebody wanted one back then, the stores had to import one in. And I got another version of this. It just happened to find this, I want to say, in, uh, in St. John quite a long time ago. If this was made, before I show it to you, I want to find out, I, I have to look at this every time. This is made in West Germany. So a and I mean, the way most labels work is that they have a standard uh, format for how they manufacture things. It's pretty much the same all over the world, or variants of it. So this is Open Fire from West Germany. I just happened to come across this. It actually has live in brackets here. That's what it looks like there. It does have the same a and serial number, just a different prefix on it. Back of it looks quite different. 
That's what the cassette looks like. Now this design, this red design, is what uh, A&M used for their singles at the time, which is interesting. I actually don't have any Y&T singles, and you'll also notice that it was manufactured by Polygram. It's molded into the cassette itself. You see that? I'll show you here. It's really tough to see. I'm going to pinpoint it for you here. Right there. This is Polygram. And actually, for that matter, the case itself, the, it says Polygram on it. So Polygram actually owned it. A&M long before I knew they did. It wasn't until the early 90s that they sort of did that whole merger thing. There's no advertisement for the home video, just the songs. So yeah, that was cool. I looked at that and looked it up quick. The final uh, studio album that Y&T did for A&M came out in 1985. They were really pushing them to break big at this point. So a lot of things changed. They didn't use their classic logo. They used this ugly black logo that's practically invisible and the album's called Down for the Count and this, this I don't like this bright pink color here um, I like the color concept I would love to see what it lo would look like with the classic logo and some red and black you know like more traditional Y&T colors but uh, I like the concept and I get it Down for the Count haha <laughs> and it looks totally different on the side if you're looking for this it's like you can't see it like I'm sure there were people that heard Summertime Girls or saw the video on MTV and thought I like that song who sings it they can't find it, so A&M has to shoulder a little bit of the blame for them not breaking like they should have. Now, they actually did use the, the real logo for the cassette itself, which of course you couldn't see unless you bought it. So, so not my favorite artwork for sure. Kind of an unflattering photo of the band there too. And there you go, they used the logo again up here for some reason. Weird. And this is one case where the Canadian version of it, because A&M Canada cassettes were so formatted, uh, they actually didn't look that different. You could see that it says Y&T because they have it on top here. And that's a more squared version, like the record, of Down for the Count. This was the second Y&T album that I bought, uh, less than a week after Mean Streak. It was my local Sam the Record Man, and I, it had been there for a while, so I bought it. There you go. kind of looks a lot like the, the back cover of the In Rock We Trust cassette. Nothing in it for credits, just a little bit of credits on the very back. Cassette looks a little different. It doesn't have the, um, this, the, the window here is a little bit smaller. I've never seen another one like that. And I also have a very similar looking one, down for the count, which is a Columbia House version, which is just a little bit different there with the brackets, number of the brackets, and up here in the credits where it's, uh, this is manufactured by Columbia House, and the cassette looks very different. So at that point, um, Y&T left A&M, but now something in 86 happened that was significant. And this is one of very, might be the only cassette that I have in my collection that I don't have a CD counterpart for. And it's this. This is Hearing Aid, an all-star album for Famine Relief. Mid-80s were the time when uh, countries, recording artists in different countries, were getting together for Famine Relief. Bob Geldof started Band-Aid, Do They Know It's Christmas, USA for Africa had We Are the World, and on that same album, Northern Lights, which is a Canadian version of it, had Tears Are Not Enough. This was spearheaded by the late Ronnie James Dio, and it was the hard rock, heavy metal equivalent of those previous songs. Of course, it didn't have the success, but they did a song called Stars, and they have this all-star chorus here. Everyone is listed in here. Uh, it's really hard to see. I wish I had. I don't even have it on record. On record, you could see who everybody was. Much more clear. But one of these guys in here is Dave Manichetti. And I think Dave is in the back row here somewhere. So Dave actually sings quite a bit of the lead on this, which is pretty cool. This came out on Mercury Records in 1986. Very hard to find. I found it for a dollar in 1993. And so I was excited to buy that to get stars. But this is also, there's, there's not just that one song on it. Uh, other artists contributed songs, so except Motorhead, Scorpions, there's a Jimi Hendrix song on here. Uh, there's a live version of Distant Early Warning by Rush from the Grace Under Pressure concert, which at the time was not a I didn't have, so uh, there's a live version of Heavens on Fire by Kiss, which is from the Animalized Live Uncensored home video. But the main thing is the second to the last song on here is the studio version of Y&T's Go For The Throat. So to me, it was the best dollar I ever spent. Now, thankfully, the go for that version of Go for the Throat ended up on the reissued version of In Rock We Trust. 
credits talking about the making of the song and also crediting the various record labels that you know many of these artists were on which I think has a lot to do with why it's held up today it's been being held up and it's never been uh, properly reissued uh, uh, Ronnie James Dio's widow Wendy has said it's going to come out but it's been nine years since I read any updates on that so there you go here Nate it's part of the Y&T story uh, in 1987 uh, they switched labels from A&M to Geffen. This was supposed to be when they did what Whitesnake did, what Aerosmith did, going to Geffen, revamping their look, their sound to a certain extent, and becoming big. It didn't happen with uh, Y&T, but they gave it a go. Uh, this is Contagious, and this is the only Y&T album designed by Hugh Syme. You can kind of tell. Hey, use the right logo. I like the way the logo looks on this. This is a, a U.S. version. And by now, you know, the U.S., a lot of the Warner Group cassettes use this clear. I always thought these clear cassettes were so cool. Kind of glammed the guys up a little bit. Of course, Leonard Hayes uh, on drums is out. Jimmy DeGrasso's in. This is a picture of the band and credits. And for the first time, all the lyrics inside one of the cassettes. And I also have a Canadian version of Contagious. So it looks the same here on the side, very different. And this is actually uh, Columbia OSU. You can see CRC there and a little number in brackets. Other than that, it doesn't look all that different. There's your song titles and the cassette itself, which is a little faded. Inside of this cassette, the photo, lyrics, and credits are exactly like the US one. So, as is the case when bands switch labels, AM then comes back with something. They put out another home video. This is Summertime Girls and All American Boys. It's a very, very short little video that has, uh, well, I'll flip it over here, five videos and some interview footage, probably from MTV. If you'll notice, um, I don't have the record in front of me right now, but a, that's the same live shot of Live at the San Francisco Civic, and this explosion here is from the inside of Open Fire. Why didn't they break? a and just didn't put the time in, in my opinion. And this is what it looks like on the side, very similar. And there is the uh, VHS tape itself. Uh, the next thing I've got to show you came out in 1989. A UK label called Castle Communications uh, licensed tracks from various bands and put out various compilations, often with very unique looking artwork and uh, unique track listing. So they put out a Y&T anthology on record, cassette, and CD. I first got it on CD back in 1992, and there were some songs on there that I didn't yet have the studio albums that they appeared on on compact disc, so it was worthwhile. I eventually wanted to get it on cassette. It's unopened, actually. It came sealed, double-play cassette. Very weird-looking Y&T logo. I kind of like it. It's better than the one on Down for the Count. And uh, just a selection of songs from all of their A&M albums. Heavy on uh, Earth Shaker and Black Tiger. So, now we're reaching the point where I actually got into the band in 1990 when they released their 10th album, which was actually called 10. So this is a Canadian version of 10. If you'll notice, it's black lettering on the side. Canada, I think, is the only country that did this. And... Uh, I love this album a lot. Very striking with the orange. It really stood out. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't, you know, it didn't quite make it. This is their last album on a major label. This is what the cassette looks like. You'll see the, the U.S. cassettes are quite different. Picture of the band. Joey Alves is out now, and uh, Steph Burns was in on second guitar. Some credits there, some more credits here, some songwriting. Not the lyrics, and all of the credits, which are inside the CD. That cassette fell down. There we go. So I've got two um, U.S. cassettes to show you, which is kind of odd. Neither of them are a Columbia House one, but I, I've got two of them because they look different. No, no different on the side. Uh, so it's white here instead of black. On the back here, that's what it looks like. Kind of, kind of similar. No barcode there. Here's what the, the cassette looks like. Now this is the one that you see, I think, most often. Is this tape right here. Same as in the Canadian cassette. These are all pretty uniform. 
I've got another one to show you. Um, the only thing, okay, so here we go. Now there's a barcode on it, and the cassette is way different looking. So I thought, oh, I know what this is, because in late 1990, Geffen changed distributors from Warner Brothers to MCA. Maybe that's it. And I looked into it, and no, both of those have Warner Communications Company on them. So maybe they were pressed at different places at the same time. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't think 10 sold well enough to have a repressing, but maybe, maybe it did. I don't know. Anyway, so that's that. Also in 1990, A&M retaliate with this. Best of 81 to 85. A good collection and probably one of the easiest things you can find to get started on Y&T if you're curious. Cover makes no sense at all. That's what it looks like on the side. This is a long cassette. Here it advertises the two Y&T home videos which is when I became aware of their existence and tried to seek them out and was successful. That's what A&M cassettes looked like in the States at the time. Um, if you've got extreme support graffiti it looks like this as well. And a pretty generous write-up from um, Michael Faley and Brian Slagle of Metal, uh, Metal Blade Records about the history of the band. This is the first one. I bought this as a new fan. This is when I learned that Y&T stood for yesterday and today. I did not know. Now, for some reason, you have to flip this over to read the, the uh, song credits. And I looked at, I remember thinking, why would two guys from Metal Blade Records be doing this write-up? Where it came out at a and but... Of course, this is the last thing that A&M put out. They did a, a, a farewell tour at the end of 1990 in their, you know, home stomping grounds. And then they disbanded for about five years. And I was very disappointed. I was like, this is typical. I just get into a band and they break up. But they commemorated that with, I wish they'd have filmed it, but they commemorated it with a live album which came out in summer 91 called Yesterday and Today Live. Now that's an older photo of Dave Menachetti. And this actually was on Metal Blade Records. If you can see here, I switched cases, but this was a cutout, so it had the chunk taken through it. And um, a career spanning, actually. There's something from almost every album on this. And if you look there on the bottom where the barcode is, that's, you'll recognize that as part of the Mean Streak artwork. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. This is what the U.S. cassette looked like. It was on Metal Blade Records, which at the time had Warner Brothers distribution, so it followed the Warner Brothers uh, catalog numbers, In information about the recording of the album, band photos, and a lengthy write-up on the band. I found out, found out from this album, their second album was called Struck Down, I never knew, and I, of course I'd never heard the song before either. So there's the classic Y&T logo, there is the original Yesterday and Today logo, which I had never seen in its entirety before. So I learned a lot from reading these credits, and it's just a great live album. It's a great live album. And uh, at that point, it was, you know, I was merely trying to find all of their albums and then maybe get some of them on CD. This is, uh, what you see less is the Canadian version of Yesterday and Today Live. And the main difference here, everything else is the same, but the cassette itself looks significantly different. That's the more of a Canadian look to this. And you don't see this one that often. So like I said, they were kind of out of it for about five years out of the you know, non-active. Then I was so happy to find out that they got back together. In 1995, they put up this album, Musically Incorrect. This is a UK version of it on Music for Nations Records on uh, cassette, because you don't see it on cassette very much. And like the CD, there's no band photos in here at all, but there's just lyrics and a little bit of credits. But the main thing was that the Y&T were back and making music and um, really good music, too. Fold this just right. There we go. One more thing. i got one more cassette to show you. So they followed that up pretty quickly with another album in 1997 called Endangered Species. like this artwork a lot. Uh, this is actually on a Canadian label called D-Rock Records, D-E-Rock. They put out a lot of um, tribute albums that a lot of these 80s rock guys were on, and they also put out Rats Collage. They put out a few things, and then uh, Helix's Half Half Alive album, and then they went into business, and I don't think anybody get paid. So that's the cassette. Uh, if you look at my CD episode, if you don't have this out, the songs are in slightly different order. That's what the cassette itself looked like. 
I like the credits inside this one. There's still no pictures, but there's a write-up from the late Phil Kenamore about each of the songs, which kind of shed a little light on the, uh, the writing process and all of the lyrics. It wouldn't be until 2010 before they put out another album, uh, Face Melter, which of course didn't come out on cassette. And uh, as of this filming, there's still no new YT album. So I've got most, I mean, with the exception of one studio album, I've got them all on cassette. Uh, but I do want to talk about this because I don't really know any other place to talk about it. Um, I may have covered this on my CD episode, but I can't remember. But it's worth mentioning. This is a DVD CD collection they put out in 2007 called Live One Hot Night. Incredible concert. Lots of cool stuff on the bonus DVD, and then there's a CD of the concert itself. A cool booklet inside of this, which is rare for a DVD. Um, very hard to find now, so I won't go into much detail, because if you don't have it, it's, it's scarce. So, it's, But you never know. You might be a, If you're a YT fan, never seen them live, like me, uh, this is a more recent concert, even though the, the lineup has changed at that point since this. So yeah, there you go. Another episode of one of my favorite bands, YT. Thanks for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.